The following interview was conducted with Everett Corley, a uh, bachelor of uh, Purdue alumnus in the class of 1976 for the Purdue University Oral History Program. This is part two, a previous one had been done, and it was took place today on um, September the 6th, 2012 in Stewart Center. Also sitting in is Tracy Grimm, the Baron Hilton Flight and Space Exploration Archivist, which is a new position on our staff. We're very pleased to, to have her and delighted that she can be sitting in with us. Good afternoon again, uh, Mr. Corley, and let's start with the unit, the Montfort Point unit. Okay. Yes, uh, Mrs. Marshy, um, I went in the Marine Corps uh, July 20th, 1945. It was right near the end of World War II. Okay. And uh, I went to Moffat Point <clears throat> from here in Indianapolis. There was approximately uh, five guys from Indiana that went with me. They were from various parts of, most of them were from Gary. Okay. And they, was, they were all black because uh, the uh, uh, black draftees were being drafted and examined all together uh, at the armory here in Indianapolis. Okay. And uh, we went from uh, uh, here to the federal, uh, after passing our physicals to the federal building at the, the old post office at Ohio in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we went up to the Marine recruiting, and those that were drafted had to volunteer. They were volunteers in the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then we went to the old uh, uh, YMCA, it used to be on the, on the Illinois Street, and they gave us a meal. And from there we went to Union Station, got on a train and went from uh, here to Wilson, North Carolina. And uh, we, from there, we took a bus, trailways bus from, because trains didn't run from Wilson to Jacksonville. We took trailways bus from Wilson, North Carolina to Jacksonville, North Carolina, where Montford Point was. Montford Point was a camp that was designated for blacks of Marines to be trained in the Marine Corps. Okay. It wasn't integrated then. Service weren't integrated then. Okay. The white Marines went to boot camp at uh, Paris Island, South Carolina, and San Diego. But this is a special camp where we took all our training as part of Camp Lejeune Complex in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And, uh, it was basically, it had his new camp, and basically the facilities really weren't all that bad. Okay. Uh, it, it, it was just kind of isolated from the rest of the camp. And the main camp at Camp Lejeune for white Marines was Hadnot Point, point, and it was about three miles from Montford Point. We took all our training at Montford Point. And we had, uh, at first we had white DIs that trained you, and then uh, they were replaced after black D DIs were trained by the black DI. I had black DI. In fact, I had, uh, my DI was from Minneapolis, Arbor Trade Oh, my a, goodness, how nice. An excellent uh, person and, and an excellent Marine. Hmm. And he's passed, and uh, um, <clears throat> I, uh, the training was very extensive because at the time I went in, they were still training people for these combat units in the Pacific. The war was still going on. Sure. And uh, it, it was very, uh, very harsh and very uh, extensive, and boot camp. Uh, seemed to be harder with the black DIs <laughs> because they expected more of you <laughs> than uh, the white DIs and 
a lot of them, uh, in comparison, to the I, I asked them, they said, oh, it was much harder <laughs> under the back of the eyes because <laughs> their expectations were a little okay. uh, higher. But there was approximately 20 out of the whole black population. There was about 20,000 blacks that served in the Marine Corps uh, during World War II, and uh, half of those served in the Pacific in combat units. And it wasn't a, a combat uh, invasion in the Pacific that blacks didn't participate in uh, in some way or another. Most of them were in ammo companies and depot companies, but they were attached to combat units and uh, I myself spent 20, well, I spent good uh, pet, uh, time on Saipan in Mariana Islands, Guam and Saipan. Hmm. We were guarding Japanese prisoners of war. Okay. And so most of, of the units at Montford, left Montford Point were, went over, went to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long was that boot camp? How about how long were you down there before that you were sent to the Pacific? Boot camp is 12 weeks. Okay. And, and uh, did you it's go very to extensive in the latter part of boot camp? Uh, you have to fire on the rifle range. You went to Stone Bay, and you had to qualify at least as a marksman on the uh, uh, rifle range. Say, out of 250 points, you had at least. Uh, get 230 to qualify as a marshman. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was a part of the requirement for being a Marine, to get your um, shield and, and a break boot camp. Okay, all right, okay. Um, but how long then, uh, when did you get out of the service? How long were you in? What was your length of time? Uh, I stayed during World War II uh, I um, stayed from 1945 to August 25th, 1947. Okay, okay. And then I stayed in the reserve, active reserve, up until 1959. Wow. And, okay. That's uh, quite I a... also was called back in the Korean. Oh, were you? Okay. <laughs> yes, when it broke out. Uh-huh, okay. Did you, did you serve over, did you go, did you have to go to Korea? No, oh. but I had to go back in service and train. I, I see. Okay. I okay. All righty. Um, is that Montfort Point, does that camp location still exist today? or? Oh, yes. Oh, does it? Okay. It's, it's uh, Montfort Point is uh, right is about a half mile from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Okay. And, uh, in fact, they held their convention down there this year. Oh, is that right? The, uh, uh -huh. the, yes, the members of the Montford Point Marine Association held their national convention at Montford Point this year. Oh, okay. They're um, putting a, a monument there for in, mem in uh, commemoration for the original men of Montford Point. Wonderful. Very nice. I hope they're going to. Did you go to the. Uh, were you able to go this year or not? I wasn't able to go, Mr. Okay. Marquis, because okay. I'm recovering from a stroke and due to health reasons. Okay, that's right. Well, they'll send you a picture of you. Have you seen a picture of the monument? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. All right. And uh, it's, it's very. Uh, it was, it, it, it's an impressive monument and it's large. Good. Yes. And, and we've had. Uh, uh, companies like uh, uh, the airplane companies, uh, some of them have contributed to this sure. monument. Wonderful. Oh, that's very nice. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Congressional Gold Medal. Um, how did you find out that you were one of the recipients? Well, um, <clears throat> there's a Congress lady named Brown from Florida and she's in the House of Representatives. And she was, when we held our convention in Jacksonville, North of Florida, she was uh, uh, one of the interested people that thought this would be good since 
Tuskegee got one. It'd be good for us to get some kind of commemoration. And she pushed it forward and, uh, and to, to Congress. And she and also the Indiana uh, Congressman uh, Pence uh, uh-huh. put it on the floor of, uh, of the Congress. And, uh, but she thought it'd be good to have some kind of commemoration being before all of us died out. Okay, very <laughs> nice. Well, did, did somebody then, when it got passed, then did someone touch base with you to find out that you would be one of the recipients? Yes. Okay. Uh, Congressman Pence okay. sent uh, a uh, commemoration certificate and he was one of the uh, in- influential people that helped get it uh, through uh, Congress mm-hmm. and went through Congress uh, on both sides, <laughs> which is kind of unusual. Nobody, everybody is 100% for it. Wonderful. And oh, that's nice Democrats to hear. Both Democrats and Republicans. Uh huh. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, now then, but it, the, it was the presentation of, of uh, the material that your daughter sent was at the White House, is that correct? Yes. Okay. They, uh, the Commandant of the Marine Corps was adamant that uh, they people should know about the history of the Marine Corps and the history of the blacks uh, served in the Marine Corps during World War II and how they got in before ninth, uh, August uh, of 1942, mm-hmm. it was all white from okay. from the Civil War. The Marine Corps was from from the Revolutionary War up until 1942. No blacks could get in the Marine Corps, and we were the first. Oh boy! Okay. That's I hate to interrupt. Uh, the prison the presentation was here in the city of Lawrence uh, oh. under the direction of the mayor. Okay. Because okay. my father wasn't able to travel to Washington. Right. Okay. So they had the four day one, but that presentation that that uh, on the email that was in the city of Lawrence. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about the ceremony? Go you ahead, both, Sue. Both. Oh, the, oh, wow! The, <laughs> that <laughs> ceremony was over the moon for us because um, we were um, uh, actually informed that there would be three gentlemen uh, from Lawrence as the uh, Grand Marshals in the Independence Day Parade here, and that was through an invitation from our mayor, Mayor Jessup. And so uh, my father couldn't attend due to health reasons, uh, the the one in Washington, and so I was hoping that they would tag team his medal um, with the uh, parade. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened, through the grace of God, that Andre Carson, the night before, agreed to uh, present the medal because uh, I believe it was a special request that the mayor made. And so it was a huge presentation here in the city of Lawrence that my father uh, received his medal with um, Captain, uh, I believe his name is, what was his name, Captain Martin from the Marines? I can't remember his last name. But he presented along with um, Congressman Carson and uh, the mayor here. And my father was the only one to receive his medal that day because the other gentlemen, they had uh, already taken the trip to Washington. So it was kind of special just for a solo um, presentation to be given, um, bestowed upon my father by a congressman. That was quite a special special event. Well, he's a very special person. That is so true. That is so true. Yeah. So Uh, we were all very proud. Yeah. Wonderful. That's good. Um, and, uh, and what can you tell it can you describe the metal was it on a, a um, uh, material or how yes, it's an, or on in a, a box it's on a special ribbon uh, it's patriotic ribbon um, the, the colors of uh, red white and blue and it's a bronze metal it's a replica of the gold medal that is at the Smithsonian uh, that designates uh, their honor the Montfort Point Marines honor Right. So the uh, gentlemen were all given a bronze medal, which is a replica of that. Wonderful. And it's oh. in a shadow box right now in our fireplace. So <laughs> very With the good. With the rest of uh, some honor honorary medals that he received in World War II. Sure. Very nice. Oh, I think that's wonderful. I'm thank delighted you. to get that I know you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, um, look, can we talk a little bit about anything special you're doing in your retirement? Or are you just or are you just taking it easy? You have your daughter there to help out, right? Well, uh, <laughs> yes. 
Okay. And also, the uh, going back to that uh, commemoration sure. on July 4th, where the, 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 I got the medal, they had us designated, the three of us from Indianapolis, as Grand Marshals for the parade out here in Lawrence. Very nice. And uh, there was Sergeant Major Washington, Johnny Washington, uh, Otis Allen, Otis Allen, who recently passed, mm -hmm. and Lancaster uh, and Price. Lancaster Price, and uh, Otis Allen and Lancaster Price got their medals in Washington D.C. Okay, okay. How's it feel? How's it feel, also, huh? How's it feel to be a Grand Marshal? Huh? How's it feel to be a Grand Marshal? That's oh, good. It was, uh, a, I didn't know the Lawrence was that big. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there were people standing on the street, and everybody was. Oh, it was impressive, it was, very it was. impressive. Well, it sure and was. Lawrence Central Band leading the uh, parade. It, it was a very large parade. You better watch out. They may call you for the Indy, too. <laughs> <laughs> you got be nice. that, That's because you have prior experience. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh dear! So you're just uh, kind of taking it easy this today, huh? And yeah. Uh, basically, I'm I'm recuperating from uh, the strokes I had, and they weren't debilitating, thank the Lord. Okay. But uh, I I don't have the strength that I used to have. Well, can you? But you can get around them. I can huh? get around. Good. Yeah, I'm That's not, all right. Uh, I'm right. I would even like to come up and see. Well, uh, maybe it, we'll, well, maybe it'll work out. We'll just see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> That's um, right. They play at Notre Dame. Yeah. Oh, we got to watch the game on Saturday. I'll be. Oh yeah, uh, I'm definitely watching that game. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about an outstanding event? You got something you'd like to share with us? Besides, I would think maybe this would be your outstanding event, don't you think? This is uh, an outstanding event. The it was very impressive because uh, it came on the heels of the Tuskegee Airmen who uh -huh. were exemplary. They were special guys. And, uh, you know, to even to be named in the same category as, as those guys is quite an honor. It is, right. And, and you but, should feel very proud of that. That's wonderful. We lost... Uh, we had many casualties in the Pacific. A lot of guys got killed and wounded, mm -hmm. and some got uh, medals of uh, citations oh, okay. for bravery. Okay. Especially on uh, Iwo Jima, there was Davis, and there was two guys that got the bronze medal for their bravery. Hmm. But oh. there were got a lot of also outs quite a few that were killed. Sure. Got a lot of outstanding people that served in that unit. Yes. Right. Okay. And uh, we got to uh, see the first. We didn't have any black officers in the first. Now they got six black generals in the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. And the lieutenant, they're three-star generals. Huh. So at times it really changed. Surely <laughs> have, right. Yeah, okay. We didn't have any any officers at all when I was in the Marine Corps. Okay. Any okay. black officers. Okay. Branch was the first one, and that was after I finished boot camp that he, mm -hmm. he made him an officer. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to let you, uh, anything that I forgot to ask, I'm going to let you make some comments if you like, or your daughter, or both. In, and my mother's on the phone now, too. Okay, yeah. all right. And your mother or your wife too. Hi there. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Her Good. Husband. Okay. It's a very special occasion on a, from our standpoint to be able to interview, and it's just a really, I'm very pleased and very honored to be able to uh, have have this conversation. Oh, so well, thank I'll leave you it up too. to you people. Oh, okay. Anything that I forgot or you'd like to add? Um, what can, can you all think of anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's see. Well, the got well. How, how about this one? They got a prediction for Purdue's football team this year. Uh, they look. They're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> They've got. Uh, that's, that's another thing. As oh boy, times really changed because I can remember when we didn't have any blacks on the football team. Mm -hmm. I, bet. I went out for football myself and under Sue Holcomb. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I remember his name. Yeah, and uh, I can. I know the circumstances. Now I look up and 
about 90 percent of the team sure, quite brothers. a few <laughs> quite a few that's right exactly yeah, right. Said, gee time change. well same thing in the marine corps time change for the better oh, thank sure. goodness right exactly yeah okay, okay. But well, the, no, Purdue's looking good. Well, we'll keep. Well, let's hope that we continue. This is only game one. It's a long wait for those twelve games. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, they'll beat Notre Dame. They beat them before. I know. You it's, know, the year I was supposed to be on that team too in in 1951. Uh huh. Uh, they uh, beat Notre Dame, and they weren't supposed to do that. Well, they call us the spoiler makers. So let's hope that holds out this weekend. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Anything else that uh, that you want would like to add? Uh, let's see. Well, let's hope that uh, uh, the uh, Moffat Point Marines will continue, and sure. uh, we can get some young guys to keep it perpetuated. Good. Keep it going, and we have our meeting uh, this Sunday okay. at the American Legion, on, and uh, right now everything's looking up. Good. We'll hope we'll keep our fingers crossed, okay? Yes. yes. All right. It is it is such a golden era for people to learn about, and oh. I was uh, only hoping that maybe they would do a documentary or a uh, film about that, just as they did the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, because uh, people need to know the true facts about that history, sure. and a lot of times it's overlooked. Right. So I was just. Uh, grateful that they embraced it with the medal, and so they need to continue, you know, to preserve this sure. legacy as well. Right. Well, maybe things will move move along. It's hard to, to at least there's a step forward in that direction. That is, yes, that's right. true. But I appreciate you uh, taking the time to yes. add this with the. Uh, well, his uh, library entry. Well, this, this is so we, special. I also want to mention that his daughter Paula and his wife were also sitting in, and we'll, like we did in the past, we will uh, prepare a draft transcript, okay. and we'll send it to you so that you'll be able to review it before we put it on our website. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, and I hope we keep in touch. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Marky, Th Marky. Th Marky. Th with you. Thank right. you very much. Boiler up. Okay. Boiler up. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.